Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we have a Buck Spitfire. Cool looking little knife there. I like that uh, blade geometry. Snap it. There we go. I like that blade geometry and some nice, um, nicely colored aluminum. It kind of has a finish. You could feel it, a brush finish to the aluminum. I would call that burnt orange. Clip on the back. Little jump in here, nice little knife. Um, uh, I've got some issues with this knife though. So, um, this is the Buck Spitfire 722. We're going to talk about it in an upcoming video. I'm going to let you know uh, what my problems are and whether you should buy one of these knives. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Hi to all my viewers. Don't forget, this is uh, the Ellaville Knife Show Week. So, uh, in the end of the week, we're going to be going up there, spending some time on my way up. I'm going to hit some uh, pawn shops on my way back. I'm going to a big flea market, market just a little north of Columbus. So, we're going to get tons of video uh, to show you guys what's going on there. I can't wait. Basically, I can't wait to meet all the guys, you know, and uh, have that uh, communion and companionship. So, um, thank you to all my viewers for all that you do to support the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk about this knife. This is uh, Andrew's over at Baxter Blades' uh, fault. He gets me to buy more knives than anybody else, and I just wish he would stop making knife videos because I just end up buying knives that he's showing on his channel. Uh, love watching Andrew. If you haven't gone over there, you know you ought to check out Baxter Blades. Uh, he does a really nice job. It's very enjoyable watching. So this is a lockback, as we can see here. Let me get this out the way. Maybe that'll help. Uh, this is a lockback. You have aluminum scales here, standard uh, security um, screws. You get a little bit of jimp in here, uh, a little bit of jimping down here. I'm not sure that does any good. You got a little tiny lanyard here. Uh, one nice feature is you have holes for your um, uh, top and bottom holes for your uh, clip and... Um, so you can, uh, whether you're lefty or righty, that's going to work for you. I don't really like seeing those holes, but I understand they're just trying to make a knife that's versatile um, that a lot of people uh, can relate to. And um, so the um, centering's good here. I have messed with this knife, so even though I messed with it, the centering is still good on this knife. Uh, so it has 428C steel boss heat treatment. It's not marked on there, but they do that. Um, really nice uh, multi-geometry blade there. It's got a very slight recurve. I don't really like recurves, but that doesn't bother me. I really don't think I'd even need a rod to sharpen that. You probably sharpen that on a, a stone, you know, probably well enough. Uh, really nice swedge. Very interesting swedge here. If you see if I can roll this over. Look how thin that swedge is. So, uh, uh, trying to get it in. Very thin. You could make that sharp easily if you were slow inclined to do. Very easy to, to sharpen that because it's almost to an edge. Now, it doesn't hurt, but it's you can feel it. It's thin. Um... You have an open hole here, so it's made for one-handed uh, opening, and we come to the first problem on this knife, is it's very, very, I, I can hardly open this thing 
with the thumb stud when I first got it. Uh, eventually I loosened the pivot up on it and I can do it now, but it's still uh, very, very stiff. And there's a reason why this is stiff. Um, we'll look at it in a minute. Uh, so you have that jimping up here and because of the thumb hold you have a ramp and I, I just like a knife with a ramp you know with with the little guard here in the ramp it just locks your hand in and it's just a lot easier to use you don't need one but it feels good you get good torque on your knife so I like ramps if you don't you won't like this knife um one this is a budget knife okay but it is made in America. Um, it looks kind of weird. There's something about this knife. When, when you look at the, the finish on this knife, it almost looks like there's a plastic coating on here. It just doesn't, it, it looks cheap. Okay. It looks cheap. And it's not really showing up in the camera. But when you get one, you'll see what I mean. Uh, doesn't mean it won't perform well. And uh, this knife, I'm sure, uh, one of the videos I watched on it, a guy used this knife for over a year. He's a drywaller. And, um, you know, the knife had drywall on it that he used. And he said he had five of these. And so I have no doubt this knife will perform for you. Um, but it really has some, some issues. You know, one is that it's just so tight you can't uh, one hand open it. And that's kind of the design of the knife, to be one hand open. And uh, you take uh, this Kubi here in the same price range. I paid $49 for that. I paid uh, $48 for this. Uh, it just flashes out there, very easy to open and close. It has a good ergonomic design. It has G10 scales, which are uh, very, very strong. And... Um, you can use the thumb hole to open it, or you can flick it. This this is a better knife, okay? Now, it's made in China. So, if you just want American, here's your American knife. Um, so, if you just want a basic knife made in America, I have no doubt that this will work. When you get these, um, most people were honest and point out that they're hard to open. Uh, there, it feels very gritty. They're very tight. And as I said, I could hardly open mine when I first got it. I had to loosen the pin up. So why was it that tight? Well, when you look at this, I think it's really apparent. Look, let me zoom in here. So this is a solid two uh, millimeters right here. And you can see how much smaller the lock bar is than this. And it's about 10% smaller. So the lock bar is about 1.8 millimeters. And if you follow that lock bar up, and I got the knife shut. If you follow the knife bar up, the stock on the, the blade is the same width as the stock on the um, uh, uh, lock bar. And that's a problem, okay? Because it's wider here by, by uh, 2 thousandths than it is here and when i got this knife i'll show you here when i got this knife there were no gaps here they were it was pretty tight but it was tight because they over torqued this and pinch it's the blade is pinched in there uh, to prevent these gaps that pop up in the blade and the gaps are there because watch this you could just take the blade the lock bar and move it over you see that you, you just move that lock bar along the pin. See the gap opening up right here? So this lock bar, here's the pin. The lock bars can be slid across. I don't think that's really good for the uh, lock bar pin uh, to begin with. So let's get back out of here so we don't get dizzy. So that's an engineering problem. This knife has been out a long time. And... Um, you saw that in two ways. So uh, Buck needs to take this spacer down to 1.8 inches, the same width as the lock bar in the blade. And then I believe it would be smooth as butter. It wouldn't, you wouldn't have to pinch the blade 
to, and I know that's what they're doing because that's the way mine came. Uh, they're just pinching the blade so that you don't have these lines in here, which most people would pick up and say, oh, that's not made very well. Well, guess what? It's not. That's because it's not. So the other option is to make this bigger, right? So instead of making, I think it'd be easier to make the backspacer smaller, but you could also make the stock bigger. If you went to two millimeter stock for the lock bar and for the blade, it, you wouldn't have to pinch it. And so as it is now, the knife is being pinched like this. And it should be like that so that the blade can pivot in between. And um, that's the problem with this knife. And um, I really don't understand how companies can't fix a freaking problem like that. This would be a fantastic knife if it you could open it with one hand and it worked the way it was supposed to. Um, it doesn't because it's not engineered properly. You know, the two stock difference here is causing a problem. And um, if you, you, you can loosen this up. I had it looser, by the way. Uh, and it is a lot easier to open up when it's looser. Um, but also the gaps were wider and I was worried about this thing moving back and forth and what that would do to the, the uh, pivot pin. So uh, I decided to crank it down a little bit more and I can still open it. But you should be able to put your finger on there and just one sweep open the knife. Maybe two. And uh, when you get these, I know you'll know what I'm talking about. Now I know Tom at Knife Delights uh, likes these. He's got a couple of them. And um, like I said, a lot of the people uh, uh, I reviewed still... Uh, said they used them and they like them and you know you can always use this knife to wait like uh, a normal lock back just open it up and i'm sure it's going to do fine and it, you have good ergonomics on the knife you have a good steel in the knife you have excellent blade geometry i mean it's kind of stunning it goes down to a very very thin blade there um so this will be a great slicer, a great knife for cutting rope. Um, you know, this guy was using it in drywall, uh, cutting drywall. And, um, you know, it, obviously these knives will take abuse, but they also don't work the way they were supposed to work. And, um, you know, I think Buck just needs to redesign it in the way I mentioned. It's got a good kind of goofy, um, you know, uh, uh, pocket clip. I'm having a hard time thinking here. Uh, it doesn't present a hot spot, and that's a good thing. And, you know, that's really the biggest thing to me. Uh, I, I just seldom find that I have a trouble putting a, a knife in my pocket with a pocket clip. Yeah, uh, if you, it is kind of strong, if you find that that's not working real well, just bend it up a little and take some of that uh, spring out of it, and I think it worked fine. I didn't have no problem putting it in a pair of uh, tactical pants. So, um, uh, what else is there to say about this knife? It's a pretty simple knife. It's a budget knife. Would I recommend that you go out and and uh, buy this knife for forty nine dollars? No. I wouldn't. Um, there are a lot better options out there for $49. And, um, you know, I, I'd have to go that way. If you just want an American knife, then okay. You know, it'll work for you. It'll do a good job for you. It's a good design uh, for the knife. Ergonomic, good blade, uh, strong lock on this knife. You can see that right there. You can hear it. Um, but you know, um, it's just never going to be right unless they fix this problem of differentiated metal between the front and the back. And uh, so they got to figure that out and they got to make some engineering changes. And this would be an awesome knife, you know, if it worked properly, if that thing just pulled out the way it's supposed to, but, uh, man, you got to really work at it to get it open with one hand. So uh, that's my take on this cool knife. Um, 
That's tough. You know, I, I, I like the knife design. Uh, it has some problems, you know, and so that's, that's really a shame. Um, will those problems cause the knife to fail? I, I don't think so. I think this is be an outstanding knife. And I think if you're okay with, you know, opening the knife up that way, it's a good, small ergonomic design, uh, four and a quarter here, three inch blade, you know, so a good all around EDC knife. I just, uh, you know, I'd rather have a Ranger, a buck 112 than this, frankly. Uh, yeah, I hand open my buck knives, but, um, you know, if, if, um, they fix a problem, it'd be nice to have a one hand open a knife. I mean, you could just feel that as you try to open it, you could feel it grinding in here and, uh, really, you know, shouldn't happen. So that's my take on this knife. It's, it's honest. Nobody pays me. Uh, I'm just telling you what I think. And, um, if you really, really like this knife, you know, uh, don't throw stones at me. You know, it's just my opinion. Nobody listens to me anyhow. So, all right. We'll see you in the next video.